Okay, uh, some students have been having trouble with this type of problem when you've got the uh, parallel forces and the question asks us to replace these forces. It's a parallel force system with an equivalent force acting somewhere on the plate. Remember, the only time that we can replace a system with an equivalent force is when the moment, the direction of the moments of the forces and the forces are, par are perpendicular, where the direction of the force and the direction of the resultant moment is perpendicular. Okay? And that only happens when you've got a concurrent force system. All the forces are acting through the same point because then all you've got is a resultant force acting at that point. Or if you've got a coplanar force system where all your forces are acting in the same plane, which means all the, all the moments of those forces will be perpendicular to the plane, which means the direction of the, the resultant force and the direction of the resultant moment is perpendicular. We've got a force that's acting in the plane and we've got a moment that's actually coming out of the plane. All right? And then the last one is if we've got a parallel force system, each of these forces is going to cause a moment... Let's go. Sorry, hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, so the third, um, the third type of system, again, that we can replace with a single force is if the forces are parallel, which means that each of these forces is going to cause a moment that's perpendicular to the resultant force. Okay, so the basic idea, the only time we can replace a system with a single force is if the force the resultant force and the resultant moment are perpendicular. Okay? I'm not going to go into details of exactly how to do that. We've explained that. So, here we have a problem. I'm just going to wait for it to focus. Let me just bring it closer. Maybe that'll help. Oh, come on. Sorry. There we go. Okay, sorry. My studio equipment is not so hot, okay? So we've got this parallel force system, and what we want to do is we want to replace it with an equivalent system. Remember, if we've got a bunch of forces like this, we can re that these bunch of forces have a specific effect, an external effect, and we can replace this whole system with a single force acting at a certain point. Okay, I don't know why this keeps losing focus. Okay, sorry about that. So the first step always is we sum up all the forces. We get FR, right? We get all the, the resultant force. I think you're very clear about that. If we sum up all these forces, we're going to get minus 1400 Newton or 1400 Newton acting down in the down in the negative Z direction. Okay, so remember we want to, uh, how do we replace this? We, we add up all the forces and we place it somewhere on the body and then... We need to determine where that force acts in relation to the x-axis and in relation to the y-axis. So the total force, we calculated that. But now, the, the part that's tricky for everyone is how do I know if my moments are positive or negative? Okay? So in this case, we are taking moments about an axis, guys. We take moments uh, about the x-axis and then we take moments about the y-axis. So... Um, remember the basic idea that we have is that when we're trying to find an equivalent system, we say that the resultant moment about that x-axis, for example, the x-axis, is equal to the sum of all the moments about the x-axis. Okay? What does this mean? It means I take all those forces that were acting, whatever they were, okay? All those forces... They give me a resultant, which was 1,400 Newton. That's, that is the magnitude. But that 1,400, I need to place that 1,400 somewhere. Okay, there's my x-axis. There's my y-axis, z. Okay, I need to place that somewhere. And I need to determine where, uh, where to place it. 
so that that 1400, that single force, will give me the same equivalent effect, right, as these bunch of forces, okay? So how do we do it? We equate moments. We equate moments. We say, we say the moment of the resultant, the moment of the resultant is equal to the sum. What am I doing? The sum of the moments of all the forces. The, the moment of the resultant force about a specific axis is equal to the sum of, of the moments of all the forces about that axis, about that same axis, okay? So, so we've got this four, 1400 and we want, and the moment arm is this Y, okay? So 1400 times the moment arm is going to give me a moment about the X axis. But how do I know if this 1400 that's going down like that in the negative Z, does it give me a, remember we're taking moments about the X axis, right? We're taking moments about the X axis. So how do I know if this force here causes a clockwise or an anti-clockwise, that is to say a positive or a negative, or negative or a positive moment, okay? Maybe some of you can already see how it works, but if this, this is the positive x direction, and remember that we can use the right hand rule. Not we can, we do use the right hand rule, okay? The right hand rule. Meaning, you can, you can actually determine, um, the, the sign of a moment in two ways. Either by looking at the curl of your fingers, okay? Or the direction of your thumb. Those are the two ways. So you put your, your fingers in the direction of the force, meaning you put it down in the negative Z direction, right? It's going into the plane, into the XY plane, and you curl it around. If that is, if that is the positive Z axis, okay? And it's pointing in the, that direction there. Your, your fingers go in the direction of the force and they curl around the axis, okay? Sorry, my nails are not very clean, okay? But they curl around the axis. So what, what, you can, what you can look at then is the direction of your thumb. What is the direction of your thumb? The direction of your thumb is in the negative x. Okay? So I put my, my, my fingers down in the direction of the force and I curl it around. I'm trying to hide my... my uh, my, my my fingernails. I'm trying to so I curl it around there and then I put my my finger. What is what is the direction of my thumb? It's negative x. It's negative x. So this force is causing a clockwise motion about the x axis. So that's the one way. Your your fingers are curling around around the x axis like that. So it's going in a clockwise way. So th that's the one way. Clockwise means it's negative. But then your thumb is going in the negative x direction, which also tells you the direction of the moment. So that is a negative moment. Okay? So that's why it says they're minus 1400 times y. Oh, dear. Oh, come on, man. Zoom. Focus. Okay. So that's why it says minus 1400y. That minus 1400 is not because it's a negative force. Don't make that mistake. That minus there is because that force, okay, don't pay no attention to this. This is just an arbitrary force. That, that 1400 is going down into the plane and it operates clockwise around the x-axis or your thumb is going in the negative x direction. Now, what about, what about that, these two forces here that are acting on the x-axis? Both of them will give you a zero moment. That's why you've got 600 times zero and um, 500 times zero. 600 times zero, 500 times. But what about this 100? Right? If you do the same thing, look at this guy's hand there. I put my finger up in the direction of the 100 Newton and I curl it around the x-axis. I curl it around the x-axis and my thumb is going in the positive so that 100 Newton is meant to give me a positive moment because it's anti-clockwise 
and my sum is going in the positive x. So that's why you get there 100 plus 100 times 5. What about the uh, 400? Right, the 400 is going down and you curl it, your fingers around, you're going to get a clockwise motion around the x-axis and your thumb is going to go in the negative x. That's why you get a minus, uh, dear. That's why you get a minus 400 times 10. A minus 400 times 10. And that's essentially how you do it. What about, what about this 1400 about the y-axis? If you take the sum of the moments about, you take the sum of the moments about the y-axis now, what about this 1400? That, you put your, again, you put your fingers down, you curl it around the y-axis, and your thumb goes in the positive direction. And if you look directly at the y-axis, you'll see it's going anti-clockwise, which means this gives us a positive anti-clockwise moment about the y-axis, okay? That's why that is positive. Sum of the moments, the moment about y is the sum of the moments about y. Okay, that's why you get a positive there. Let's just finish this off. Um, both these 400 and 500 are, have zero moment arms, so they're going to give us uh, zero moments. So the 400, there's the 400 times zero, the 500 times zero, okay? But now what about these two forces, 600 and the 100? The 600, put your, your fingers down in the direction of the 600 and curl it about the y-axis, and you're going to have something very similar to this over there, meaning it's going to go anti-clockwise and your thumb is going to go in the positive y direction. So 600 times 8, and it's a positive, right? 600 times 8. Uh, sorry. Okay. And then similarly, the 100 is going clockwise, and you put your, your fingers in the direction of the 100, you, you curl your fingers around the y-axis, and you can either look at the curl of your fingers or the direction of your thumb. Direction of your thumb will be negative y. So it'll be a negative moment. So the 100, the 100 there times 6, it's a negative. Okay, so I hope this has helped a little bit. Um, sorry for my dirty fingernails. Cheers.